give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. I shared a testimony in the first service of how the last week my wife was going to deliver in Consola and I followed her to the hospital. And the only major reason I followed her was that I wanted the doctor to tell us the best option to stop having baby. Does that not look somehow? The same person who wanted baby for 20 years now got to a point in his life where he said, look, enough is enough. Let's stop here. Some of you are here. The things that are not enough today, you will soon pray to God and say, God, please give me some breathing space. You can't say me because you don't believe it. It happened to me, so I believe it. It has happened to me. I got to a point, I said, no, please, God. The, the doctor said, Pastor, we have not been seeing you regularly, but we see you today. I said, yes, sir. I have a question, yes, sir. <laughs> so we sat down. I said, what is the recommendation? I said, because I don't want to Another nine months again, I want to be here. I want us to face what we already have. He said, Pastor, you want, so you want the option? The man started laughing because he's a pastor, too. He started laughing. He said, oh, I gaba you. That is the same mouth that said, I want he said, enough. So life is in seasons. Life is in seasons. You are saying, no, men, don't propose to me. Very soon you'll be so married and your husband will be so attached to you. You'll be warning every interested human being to, to, to get up. You almost write in your, in your profile, this lady is married. Stop disturbing this lady. Are you hearing me? Because you don't want to get home every time telling your husband, and three people chase me, five people chase me, ten people. You don't want that kind of story anymore. In your life, you are done. You want a job now? Oh, God, give me a job. Job is a one. Very soon you say, enough. Enough. Oh, businesses are not coming as they should. It's just very few talent to that are coming in. You're going to get to a city you say, hello, excuse us, please. We need some space. Because you can't meet up with your demand. You are, you, you are not saying amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, but for that season to come, you have to appreciate what you already have. What you have is few, it's little, but you have to celebrate it. How do you increase what you have? Celebrate it. How do you multiply what you have? Praise God over it. Dance over it. Are you hearing me? One woman walked up to my office one day. She said, Pastor, I've been married for 10 years. We only have a child. We had the child the first one year. Nine years we've been waiting. I said, Madam, you have one. Congratulations. Amen. Some people are saying, Lord, I don't care. Just give me one. Eh? Just give me one. I'm done. Bill Clinton had one. But you see, sometimes our eyes is always on what we want. That's what I want. That's, that's the one I like. That's how, you see, we are so, we are so co covetous. I thought that's the word to use. That we don't even see what we have again. What we have again does not even have value again. It is those ones. Hey, hey that one, that blue one. Hey, hey, that red one. You know how I got to know more of these things? When we started doing open market, and we started giving out yam, I know yam cannot be the same size, no matter how you try. Now, we try our best to buy big, big yams. In fact, if you come here and see those yams, they are very big. But some are bigger, you know, just life. Let me tell you, they will now queue. Most of the times, I'm, with the, I'm in the yam department. And so I see a lot of things. Grown-up mama, grandma, sis, young. This thing is everywhere. It's not limited to age. Young, old, any kind. And illiterate, literate. As soon as they are coming, their eyes is on one big yam. They are not even happy that somebody declared that they should come and collect free food. Well, they don't even care the size when they were praying the other time. They just say, give us this day our daily bread. They didn't say long. They didn't say short bread, long bread. They say bread. Now they are now where bread is. Listen, 
They are now where bread is. They have forgotten their last prayer point that is about bread. It's not about size. They are now looking at one side. You need to see what people do. Some people, they will deliberately, when they see that one you pick is not the one, they will go back. I'm telling you, we see drama there every time. They will go back and tell the next person to go and collect it. Some will get to the place, they will say, this is the one I want. We always tell them, you can't choose. We choose for you. Because we are, I mean, they dash you money, you are opening the envelope and say, how much? Are they owe you? Life. Adults. I've seen it. my mama got angry because the one we gave her is not big enough according to her standard. She got angry. She went towards some place and dropped it. And was talking to one of our officials that they should get him that one. And we insisted that no. This is free. We're not buying yam. We're giving it free. Somebody will have to go home with that one too. That's how human beings are. And if you don't take time, that's how you two can be. Mm. <clears throat> Give us this day our long bread. <laughs> Say it's long, long. <clears throat> Say, Give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. Ladies and gentlemen, the day you start appreciating what is already in your hand, that's the day things will begin to change in your life. Because when you start appreciating what you already have, your countenance will not drop. Huh? You will not be depressed. You will not be sad. You will be excited about life. Because at least I have this one. You will not be comparing yourself with other people. Sometimes when we compare ourselves with those who have overtaken us, the question is, what about those who have left behind? What about those who are in the mortuary? What about those who have been on the, in the hospital for months and their family does not even know what is going to be the next thing? Some are younger than you and I. Some are older than us. Some are our age mates. Some are more prayerful than us. It was released in the newspaper some years ago how a man spent 32 years in Bobby. Th yeah, newspaper carried it. He spent 32 years in Bobby. 38 years, sorry, 38 years in Bobby. The baby they gave back to in his family became the 38th birthday before he was released. You, you only had small cough or small catar, you have lost all your balance. You are complaining everywhere. Somebody's leg was hung for 38 years. I'm sure family member will have run away. Oh, if, they, if they didn't run away, many of them will have, it can't be all of them again. You can't thank God that God did not abandon you. You only want to thank God for blessings that you can count with your natural hands, that you can touch and feel. What about those blessings you cannot even count, that eyes can't see? What about the blessing of sleeping and waking up? Appreciate what you have. Say, I appreciate what I have. Say it confidently, I appreciate what I have. Appreciate what you have while you are stretching towards what you want. Don't let your pursuit of what you want stop you from appreciating God for what you already have. Please, I beg you, walk out of this service with understanding. I will not be so carried away with what I want that I cannot appreciate God for what I already have. Let me tell you something that happens in Africa, and some, some, some people will be delivered right now. In Africa, we use success to oppress other people. That's what we do. We use our own success to oppress other people. In fact, when we start succeeding, we start making our neighbor feel they are not hardworking enough. So in Africa, there's a lot of competition. A lot of competition in Africa, whereby I'm always trying to look at my shoe and measure it with Pastor Wojuade's shoe and see whether it's better than his own or it's Mr. Kimusa's shoe or Nino's shoe and say, okay, it's not better. My own is better. And because I'm carried away with things like that, I'm not truly happy. And I'm living through life. And time is counting. 
Seconds are becoming minutes. Minutes are becoming hours. Hours are becoming days. Days are becoming weeks. Weeks are becoming months. Months are becoming years. Years are becoming decades. Life is going. And you are in that state for 10 years, 5 years, 15 years, that you, don't, you have not fully appreciate your life and appreciate what you have and celebrate what you have. One day, a family member told me, you are 40, you have not built a house many years ago. And he was trying to make me feel bad. He said, you are 40, you've not built your own house. He said, look at so-so-so person. He's, he's, your younger, he's younger than you. He's living in his own house. When he said that, I said, sir, stop saying that to me. I've not built a house, but I've built a lot of destinies. That's what I told him. He's an elder person, but I told him to. I said, I have not built a single house, but guess what? If you know how many destinies I've built all across the world, it will, you will know that even you and the person, you have not built as much as that. Just last week, I shared a testimony. A brother, one of our brothers needed $2,000 to pay in America. He went on Instagram and said, Friends, if you have dollar, you need Naira, please contact me. He said he was not talking to strangers, he was talking to people he already knows. Nobody responded except this strange boy, this strange man, strange young man. He said, how much dollar do you need? He said, I need $2,000. He said, you get, he said, you get it. The guy sent his Naira account, Tell, send me where you want us to pay $2,000. Normally, those who have ever done this kind of transaction, you have to pay the Naira force because you are the one that plays the first demand. That's how it is. Actually, from Nigeria. <laughs> so he went to the profile of that brother, that man, and saw that he didn't have much pictures. Some of you that you fail to post enough pictures. People think you are not there. That's the signal. And he said, look, brother, I, I cannot drop my Naira because I can't see what I can hold. He said, go to my profile. You can see my address, you can see my businesses, you can see everything going on. You can blacklist me. He said, so I want you to send the $2,000 first, then I'll send the Naira. And the guy said, I will send the $2,000 to you before your Naira comes, because I discover from your profile that you follow Pastor Adioye. He said, it's not, I don't just follow him, he's my pastor. Do you know him? He said, I, I know him, but he doesn't know me. He sent me the guy's picture. The guy sent him $2,000. I don't know whether you... Some of us may think it's normal. It's not normal. For a, somebody living in America to send $2,000 to a stranger and expect another to come back. It's not normal. <laughs> Even if the person is not Yahoo boy, he can be tempted. After the money is with him, he can be tempted because there is a lot of temptation in this environment. He's hanging in the air. He has never done Yahoo before, but it can be that can be his first. <laughs> that because already the dollar is in his hand, As a, and if, <laughs> he can start thinking of <laughs> whether to close the account on Instagram <laughs> because two thousand dollars is a lot of money. He sent the naira to the guy, sent the guy's picture to me. He said, "Pastor, do you know this guy?" I said, "I don't know him." Can you compare building destiny to building house? If you don't value what you have. You, that's how you're going to feel about what you have. The world will make you feel what you have is not it. What you have is not the real thing. The world will make you feel the real thing is still before you. So that you can keep running all your life. Without being satisfied one day. Without being thankful one day. If you buy the new uh, Pajero G 2020... You will shine for one year. By 2021, there's a new model. The world will make you feel what you have is old model. Everybody say old model. old model. So you can be inside 2020 Pajero and still be feeling like you are driving a old model. Excuse me, it's what you call it that it is. Old. If my own is 2012, it's still new model to me. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. But the world is designed to make you devalue what you have. And keep stretching towards what you don't have. As if what you don't have is everything about life. Go and ask people that, are, that doesn't have money. 
Having money is everything to them. If I can just have money. Go to those who already have money, billionaires. Money is becoming a problem to them. I appreciate what I have. I love my life. I thank God for where I am. I thank God for where I'm going. Where I am is not, is not the worst situation. Where I am at the moment is not the worst condition. There are people in worst conditions. There are people in worst conditions. My condition is not the worst condition. I'm still better off. I may not be in my husband's house yet, but I'm still better off. I may not be carrying my child yet, but I'm still better off. I may not be able to feed nations yet, I'm still better off. I may still be a tenant, but I'm still better off. Because a living dog is better than a dead lion. I'm still better off.